time for a children's message, and we have been talking about, what have we been talking about the last couple of weeks, children who have been here? Chores! Thank you, David. Excellent. Yes, chores. Children, we've been talking about chores. We talked about what your favorite chore was. We talked about what your least favorite chore was. Uh, do you remember what my least favorite chore was? Yes, Izzy? Yes, good job remembering. Taking out the trash, that was my least favorite. And, and do you remember what my favorite was? Yes, Renzi? Folding laundry. Yeah, weird as that may be. Except if it's girls' laundry, then I'm not real keen on it. Because <laughs> it's so complicated. Anyway. The shape of their pants, for example. It's all like narrow and weird and you try... Anyways, anyways, we have issues with girls' clothing in our family. It's so ridiculous that girls have to put up with not enough pockets. Look, see, look at the pockets. I could put like, not that I would, well, I probably would, but I could put a whole beer bottle in my pocket. But girls, sometimes they don't even have a pocket at all. Anyway, sorry. Tangential. All right, so now, a question for you today is, do you steal? Are you thieves? Are you sure? Yeah, you sound pretty sure, but I don't know. All right, let me ask you this. When your parents give you the job to do a chore, do you ever kind of take forever to do the chore and then get distracted and play with your toys so that ten hours later it's not done? Maybe. And so do... <laughs> My my loving wife says, so does Pastor Dan. <laughs> and I could say the same about her. What? <laughs> Except, you know, the problem with my lovely wife Gwyneth is that she'll get distracted from one chore with another chore. Which is just depressing. Because then she's just being productive and doing something good anyway. Whereas me, I get distracted with something else and then I don't do the thing I was supposed to do. And it sounds like some of you have that problem too. Yeah. You know what? The Bible knows about that. And you know what? In a way, the Bible teaches us that just like, just like with what we talked about with murder, it's not just about actually killing someone. It's also about even being angry with them or even calling them names. So too, with stealing, it's not actually only about taking someone, something from someone else or from a store. It's also about stealing in your heart. And when you take your parents' command or order and you twist it and do something else with it or don't do it at all, you're kind of stealing from your parents. They told you to do this work and you didn't. And so you stole from them. It's the, same, it's the same if you have a job someday in your life. Maybe some of you will have jobs as babysitters. Any of you ever been a babysitter? Yeah? Okay. There should be lots of hands there. I'm talking to adults too. Anybody ever been a babysitter? Ever? Right? If you, if you as a babysitter, if, you're, if your boss, the parents, ask you to do a couple things, you know, watch over the children, of course, but also, you know, can you please feed them, and could you maybe do um, some dishes? 
And if you don't do some of those things, then you're kind of stealing from them. Right? It's the same with when we work um, as adults. When we don't do the work that we've been assigned, it's kind of like we're stealing. One of my favorite bands, U2, also talks about stealing in a little bit of a different way. They say in one of their songs that to hurt is to steal and to touch is to heal. And you can sort of see that, right? If I hurt someone, then I am stealing something from them. I am stealing their joy from them. So, children, do you ever hurt anybody else? No, I think mm, I'm a little bit suspicious. Right? Do you ever take a long time to do your chores or maybe not do them at all? Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you and the adults, how many of us have been guilty of stealing ever in our whole lives? Yeah, there's a lot of hands up there. And I think that's right. It's not right that we did the stealing, but it's right to be honest and confess it. And so today, in the message, we're going to talk about stealing. So, congregation, I would invite you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. We're just looking at one little verse here, but we're also looking at the Heidelberg Catechism today, uh, which, you know, I love the way the Heidelberg Catechism deals with the commandments. I didn't used to. When I was younger, I thought the Heidelberg Catechism was unanimously boring and uh, not worth paying attention to. But now I understand that there's something really good about it. But first, we look at the Scriptures. The Scripture says this in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Anyone who has been stealing, which is pretty much all of us, must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. I'm going to read that again carefully. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. The Word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned, we're also going to look at the Heidelberg Catechism question and answer number 110. Question and answer 110, you can turn in the back of your uh, hymnals, your blue hymnals, to find question and answer 110, or you can follow along here. It says, what does God forbid in the Eighth Commandment? And the answer, I love this, it's so good. The answer, He forbids, God forbids, not only outright theft and robbery punishable by law, but in God's sight, theft also includes cheating and swindling our neighbor by schemes made to appear legitimate, such as inaccurate measurements of weight, size, or volume, fraudulent merchandising, counterfeit money, excessive interest, or any other means forbidden by God. In addition, he forbids all greed and pointless squandering of his gifts. Okay. All right. Now, having read that, I would ask you to stick up your hand if, according to that, you are guilty of theft. But I am quite confident in saying that every single person here is guilty of that at some point or another. So, let's talk about work and stealing. Brothers and sisters, 
there are a couple things that are really important to pull out of this Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 verse. Right? He who has been stealing must steal no longer. Okay, good. Fair enough. Stealing is bad. Don't do it. Right? Stop doing it. If you have been doing it, stop. I remember as a kid, and maybe some of you remember this too, uh, or something very similar. I remember as a kid, we had the local corner store, and I had a friend um, whose name we'll say was Teddy. It wasn't, but, you know, anonymous, <laughs> right? And, uh, and one time when we went to the store, he totally pocketed some candy and just walked out with it. And he got caught. He got caught. And the... The corner store owner it was great. The corner store owner called the police, right? It was like five ten cent candy or something like this. But the corner store owner called the police, and the police came, and the police talked to this young man, Teddy, right? And they brought him to his parents, and his parents had a talking with Teddy. And I think... I think it's safe to say that Teddy never, ever stole anything again. At least not in that physical sense. Because even our society recognizes that the standard, the, the, the proper way to live, is that you should not steal. It is not right. And, and so the Bible says, yep, we agree with that standard, and that is true, except it has to go farther than that, but must work doing something useful with his own hands. Have ever, any of you ever, you know, while well, you're familiar with the story, but have any of you ever broken a window with a baseball or a basketball or football or something like that? No, none of Yes? <laughs> what a shock. Yeah. Did you have to... Did you have to replace it? No! Oh, if I was your father, you would have had to replace it, buddy. Right? You break something, you pay for it. No offense, Darcy. You can go back and fix it, you know, now if you need to. Okay? Right? You break something, you fix it. You steal something, you do something to make it right. Right? That's what you do. Not only did this young man have to give those candies back to the store owner, but also he had to do penance, as it were. He had to do things to make it better. And you know what? That is one of the things that is not great about our justice system. It is interesting, and this is one of the things that is difficult about our system in Canada, in Canada, when you do something illegal, you are charged by the police and you are tried as if you had committed that crime against the crown, the government, as it were. Right? So if you go and steal from somebody, right, you are charged as if you had committed that crime against the crown, not necessarily, particularly as if you had committed that crime against the store owner or the house owner or whatever. And so as a result, sometimes it happens that the person who is guilty doesn't ever actually make things right with the, the people whom they harmed. They go to jail maybe, right? They spend some time. They maybe do some community service but they're not actually often making things right with the people whom they've hurt. And, and that's changing to some degree. That's, that's changing a bit. There are more opportunities for restorative justice and so on. But the Bible teaches us that if you do something wrong to someone, you need to go and make it right with that someone. That is why when we read Jesus talking about murder earlier, Jesus says to us that we need to stop going to offer our sacrifices or going to worship. If we realize that there is someone that we have wronged, we need to stop 
lay that aside and go and make it right. And that is why Ephesians says to us that we need to stop stealing, not only stop stealing, but we also need to start working, doing something useful with our own hands. And then it moves on. Why? Must that person do something useful with their own hands so that they may have something to share with those in need? Stop doing what is wrong. Start doing something to make it right. And contribute positively to those who are in need. What a challenge. Now, when we look at our lives, we have to ask ourselves about the stealing thing. So, for those of us who are employees who work for someone else, like myself, like a number of you, are we stealing from our employer? Are we stealing from our employer by slacking off with our work? By not being honest in what we do? By skimming off the top? By... I don't know. You fill in the blank. For those of us who are employers or who are in our own employ, who are our own bosses, are we stealing from our customers by charging too much? By being a little shady with our advertisements? But not only that, what about our families? For those of us who are members of families, and this is something that has been out of whack in our culture sometimes in the past. Where we don't steal from our employers, we don't steal from the people who we work for, but sometimes we steal from our families. And we steal from our families sometimes by working too much. By spending too much time in the workplace. Or in volunteer things. Or in whatever. We steal from our family by taking away our presence. I remember this, and some of you will remember it too. And, and this was not my father's fault per se, because this is what he was taught to do. But my father was a teacher, and so he worked hard as a teacher. He worked honestly as a teacher. And so he would have marking to do when he was at home in the evenings. And then he would also often, almost always, it felt like, be on uh, council. He would be an elder. He would sometimes be the clerk of the elders uh, or of the full council, which we know is a big job. But then he would also have his districts that he needed to visit, and so he would do that. And he would be gone from our household probably five or six nights a week. And when he was home, he was doing the marking. And if he wasn't on council, he was going to be doing the contract partnership committee for the school and, and, and so on. And a lot of us knew that. And I don't hold it against my father at all. He's a wonderful, wonderful man, and he was trying to do the best he knew how. But there were times when it felt like he was never there. Gwyneth has had that experience too, where her father who was a principal in a Christian school, who was heavily involved in the community. Again, because that's what he was taught to do. That's what he knew to do. And he's, you know him, he's, he's enthusiastic, and he's passionate, and he's also very skilled, and so on. 
And so Gwyneth, I, I'm going to get this wrong a little bit, but Gwyneth had no idea one night that her father was home. Yeah, go for it. See, and this is one of the ways that work has become messed up for us as a result of the fall, right? We either try and cheat and steal and lie our way through work, or, or we maybe inadvertently, or maybe because that's what we are taught, we end up lying and cheating and stealing our way through our lives with our families because we spend too much time at work. And it's not good. And not only that, but like the thief, often we will think to ourselves, well, okay, I'll put in my time, I'll do the work, but, but I will do the work so that I can live the lifestyle that I want to live. And this is something that, that my father, again, was taught. Was that, you don't look for the job that is God's calling for you in your life. No, no, you look for whatever job you can get that is as lucrative as it can be so that you can work hard and so that you can earn the money that you need to provide for your family and so that you can live the lifestyle that you want. You, you work so that you can live. Right? But, but that's not what the Bible is teaching us here. The Bible is teaching us stop doing the bad thing, start doing the good thing, so that you can contribute to those in need. And in other places in the Scripture, it teaches us that our worship, our act of worship, part of that act of worship is the work that we do. And so, why do we work? We work because God created us to work. We saw that in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth and He created people and He gave them good things to do, including caring for the garden. We see that we work because God created us to work. We work partly because we're in God's image, which means that we work out of love because that's the primary way that we are created in God's image. And so my work is an expression of my love for God. Whether it's cleaning out the stalls of manure, or whether it's changing my kid's diaper, or whether it's creating the most complicated programming in the world, or whether it's making my sandwiches. My work is an expression of my love for God. But not only that, but my work is also an expression of my love for my fellow image bearers. For myself, yes. For my family, yes. For all of those in this world who are His image bearers. And so I stop doing the bad. I start doing the good so that I can contribute to those who have need. So brothers and sisters, this week, whether you are retired and bumping around doing whatever work you want to do, or whether you are an employee, or whether you are a family person, or whether you are an employer, examine. Are you stealing? Why are you stealing? Is it because of greed? Is it because of ignorance? Is it because you think somehow it will help you get ahead in this world in some strange idea of what success means? 
Are you stealing? Am I stealing? And if so, let us stop. Let us stop. Let us stop stealing from our employers. Let us stop stealing from our employees. Let us stop stealing from our customers. Let us stop stealing from our neighbors. Let us stop stealing from our families. And instead, let us work doing something useful with our hands so that we may share with those in need. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for work. Lord, we recognize that part of the consequences of the fall are, are that work is toilsome and troublesome sometimes, maybe often. But we also recognize that in work there is still the great possibility of doing so much that is good. And so God, we pray that You will help us readjust and recalibrate our understanding of work so that we are no longer guilty of stealing, but instead that we do good. That we love You and honor You and express our gratitude and love for You in our work that we express our love for our neighbor through our work. That work may be for us an opportunity to do useful things so that we may share with those in need. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.